Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The patient remount procedure is the final step in eliminating occlusal discrepancies prior to the delivery of the dentures. The procedure to follow will illustrate the fabrication of the type of cast to be used in the patient remount. Differing anatomical configurations of the denture base require various amounts of blockout media to prevent locking of the dentures on the remount cast. Only minimal amounts of any of these materials need to be used, enough to allow for easy removal of the denture from the cast but not so much as to cause problems in placing the denture on and off the cast. If the internal surface of the denture contains no undercuts, blockout material is not to be used. However, in this example of a mandibular ridge with severe undercuts in both the anterior and posterior areas, blockout material must be used. Undercuts should be relieved by one of several materials, either wax or in this case, clay. Wax and clay do offer advantages because they are not easily displaced by the plaster which will be going into the denture. If either wax or clay are not available, wet paper towels may be used. However, it is extremely important to only use the amount of blackout material which will relieve the undercuts and not to extend the blackout material onto the area of the denture which will give us stability on the remount cast. For this demonstration, wet asbestos will be used to black out the undercut areas. This denture and the residual ridge illustrates both anterior and posterior undercuts. Blackout media will be needed in both of these areas. The asbestos is wet, rolled up, and placed into the undercut area. It is gently tapped into place with either a number seven wax spatula or a laboratory knife. Care should be taken not to have the blackout media onto the tissue surface of the denture in areas which are not involved in the undercut. After the undercuts have been relieved, the internal surface of the denture is lubricated with a suitable media. In this case, we'll be using Vaseline. However, a tin foil substitute or even red soap is acceptable. It should be placed on all the tissue surface, including the denture borders. We then make a soupy mix of number two impression plaster. The impression plaster is then vibrated carefully into the maxillary denture.
The remaining stone is placed onto a glass slab. The denture is inverted and then gently teased into the stone on the slab. As the stone begins to set, the excess plaster is removed from the borders of the denture until we can demonstrate a smooth junction between the denture and the plaster. This is important in placing the denture on and off the remount cast accurately. After the plaster has completely set, the casts are removed from the glass slab and the borders are inspected. We should be able to see all the peripheries of the denture above the plaster. Using either a buffalo knife or a number seven wax spatula, the denture is carefully removed from the cast. It should be teased in several areas so as not to break the remount cast. Carefully the denture is removed from the remount cast and both the internal surface of the denture and the tissue surface of the remount cast is inspected. The remount cast should be an accurate representation of the internal surface of the denture. The denture itself is cleaned of all excess plaster and all the blackout media used inside the denture is removed from the remount cast. This is extremely important when using either wet asbestos or wet paper towels because as this material sets it tends to expand and when it does this it becomes difficult to place the denture on and off the remount cast in the same location. After both the cast and the denture has been cleaned, we place the denture back onto the remount cast and test for stability of the denture on the cast. This is done by placing a finger on each side of the arch and attempting to rock the denture from side to side. The denture is then placed back onto the remount cast and the cast itself is trimmed. Mandibular remount casts are fabricated in the same manner. Again, as with the maxillary denture, it is important that the borders be visible around all the mandibular peripheries. Special attention is placed on cleaning the tongue space of any excess plaster. Utilizing the remount cast 
we are now ready to affix the maxillary denture to the articulator with the aid of an occlusal index. Wax check bites will then be taken to mount the mandibular cast and the denture in order to complete the occlusal modifications. Correction of minor errors in the original jaw relation records take place during the patient remount. However, the methods and materials used for the patient remount may in themselves incorporate errors, and thus a great deal of care must be taken while performing this procedure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.